Hello and welcome to Introduction to Categorical Logic. Consider the following argument. Everything in Sheila's house is red. Sheila has a lampshade in her house, therefore Sheila's lampshade is red. This argument appears to be obviously valid, but if we try to show its validity based on the systems that we have used up until now, we find ourselves falling short. Let's look at this argument again. Everything in Sheila's house is red, we might symbolize as H. Sheila has a lampshade in her house, we might symbolize, symbolize as L. Therefore, Sheila's lampshade is red, we would symbolize as R. H comma L therefore R doesn't seem like it would be valid, even though it appears that if the premises of these arguments of this, oh, it appears that if the premises of this argument are true, then the conclusion must necessarily be true. We need another piece to our logical system in order to be able to show that this argument is indeed valid. We need the notion of a category. Now, eventually, we will get to a point where we will introduce the notion of a quantifier into our first order logic language, and we will be able to do symbolic representations of the premises and the conclusion that we saw in the previous argument, as well as being able to do a proof in order to be able to demonstrate the validity of that sequence. That's where we're going with our next exam. But for this exam, we're going to be focusing on talking about categorical logic more in terms of looking at it in the natural language, even though putting it into a standard form, and also eventually using Venn diagrams in order to determine validity. I want to give a quick historical note about Aristotle of Stagira from 384 before current era to 322 before current era. If you're interested in Aristotle and his philosophy, please check out my other YouTube video that has a longer series of lectures about it. But Aristotle is widely considered the father of categorical logic. Now, Aristotle realized that there are four different categorical statements. All SRP, no SRP, some SRP, and some SR not P. We will discuss these four statements in more detail. And if we put them into syllogisms, and remember a syllogism is a special type of argument that has exactly two premises as well as the conclusion, that would give us 256 distinct syllogistic categorical forms. Aristotle went through and established which were valid and which were invalid by brute force, which is quite the accomplishment. However, he made an assumption about empty categories that is now rejected by contemporary logicians. And we'll talk about this in more detail later, but basically the idea is that when we say something like all unicorns are magical creatures, for Aristotle, in order for that statement to be true, there had to be an actual unicorn who was actually a magical creature. Whereas as contemporary logicians, we understand that statement to mean that if there is a unicorn, then that unicorn is a magical creature. In other words, we recognize the notion of an empty set. Next up, we will be talking about how to put categorical syllogisms into standard form. Stay tuned.